Hey guys, Butler Bulldog Bill here to recap last night's college basketball invitational first round game between the Butler Bulldogs and the Delaware Blue Hens. Um, this was Butler's first ever appearance into the CBI and they got the privilege to host uh, the first game there against Delaware. Um, very, very, very good game by Butler last night. Um, they had some extremely good games, performances by Krishan Hopkins, scored 19 points. He was on fire last night. It seemed like he was hitting everything um, from what I was watching. And Andrew Smith had 17 points, and I was really impressed with him, the way he was able to post up. He was backing players down, you know, using his body more than I've seen him use it, um, at least this past season. And he was throwing down some dunks last night, too, which was really um really good to see because he doesn't do that a whole lot but uh they led butler to a 75 to 58 win over delaware last night um another thing that probably needs mention is chase de gaul first half was three for three for three point range um he was on fire that first half second half he took three three pointers and missed all three um but uh still 50 percent not that bad. But yeah, Butler wins 75 to 58. They're, uh, they they had an eight point lead at halftime. Uh, this game was on HDNet. It's a channel that Mark Cuban owns. Um, surprisingly, I have this channel, which I didn't know. Uh, you know, you flip through the guide to see what college basketball games are on, and then you come upon HDNet, Butler versus Delaware. So. It was it was pretty awesome to have knowing that I could watch Butler. So, but anyway, Butler took control of this game. Um, you know, late in the first half, um, they exchanged leads and they kept going into ties with Delaware early in the game, real early in the game. And by the end of the first half, Butler uh, jumped out to um, an eight-point lead. Um, went into the eight went into halftime with an eight-point lead. Came out in the second half. And just extended it into the double digits. Uh, Delaware wasn't able to really recover. I believe they cut it down to nine points at one point, and you know, the, after like being down 15, fans started getting worried a little bit. Um, I, I know I kind of did. It looked like they had the momentum, but Ronald Norred came down and busted a three-pointer right in their face, so it brought the lead back up to 12, and it never got into single digits again for the rest of the game. Um, this was Butler's first game in 11 days, so I was kind of, I was a little bit worried that they'd be a little rusty, and especially with the way they played against Valparaiso in their, uh, you know, in their last game, I, I wasn't too, um, you know, I was pretty concerned that they might come out looking horrid. And I know Delaware, they're from the Cl Colonial Athletic Association, the CAA, so they're conference rivals with George Mason, VCU, Old Dominion. Drexel, you know, teams like that. And so they've had stellar competition all season. And, you know, they came into the game with an 18-13 and 13 record. And I thought they might be a little tougher for uh, for Butler, but it wasn't the case. Um, their top player, uh, his last name's Sadler. I can't remember what his first name is at the moment. Averages uh, right around, I think they said 19 points a game, and Butler held them to five points. So that's a tremendous, um, you know, that's that's tremendous for Butler's defense to be able to have, uh, pull that off. Um, he was leader of the team, and they just they kept him from, you know, putting up the points and leading the team. They had to get their points elsewhere. Uh, their J Jarvis Threet was who they had to turn to. He had 31 points, a career high for him. Um, 21 points to that in the second half. Uh, Devin Sadler was his name. I guess he ended up having 10 points after all the free throws there at the end. Uh, didn't get to his career. Didn't get to his season average. So, um, but basically, being on him get, allowed Threep to be the big scorer. And, uh, you know, congratulations to him on all those points. Career high. But the real congratulations go to Butler on this win, and they move on to the quarterfinals to face Pennsylvania, the Quakers, um, out of the Ivy League. I don't know who the home team is going to be in this game. I don't know if they've announced that yet. 
But uh, anyway, I think I should show you this uh, bracket here, the CBI bracket printed off online. Let's see. You got this one regional up here. You've got uh, Wisconsin-Milwaukee lost to TCU in the first round. Then you've got uh, Western Illinois lost to Oregon State last night. Another regional. You know, Washington State takes down San Francisco. You got Wyoming that took down North Dakota State last night. You go across here. Butler defeats Delaware. Pennsylvania defeats Quinnipiac. Um, Princeton defeats. Let's see, who did they beat? Yeah, Princeton defeats Evansville. And. Uh, Pittsburgh defeats Wofford. So, you know, we're down to 16 team bracket, down to eight teams. So we're in the quarterfinals. Those will be Monday. Um, the semifinals will be on w next Wednesday, the March 21st. And the championship, this is one of the interesting things about the CBI. The championship game is actually a best of three series. They let both teams in the championship be home, and then whoever the team with the better record is, I think, is the one that gets to host game three. So game one of the championship is March 26th, game two is March 28th, and game three is March 30th. So let's hope that Butler can get that far and can pull out this win because CBI, even though even though it doesn't seem like a very prestigious tournament, and like you're probably wondering why, why the crap does it even matter. A lot of times teams that win these postseason tournaments carry such momentum into the next season that they make big, big, big runs into the NCAA tournament, as VCU did when they won the CBI the very next year, went to the NCAA tournament, went to the Final Four. Um, Wichita State could probably carry some momentum into the NCAA tournament this year for winning the NIT last year. And, um, you know, it's and those aren't the only two cases that we have here. There's been others. I just can't remember uh, exactly who they were at the moment. But it provides such momentum, and it gives them such great postseason tournament experience. You know, you're playing for another day. You're playing to keep your season alive. So, you know, Butler's just got to keep winning, and it could translate to some, you know, big things next year, especially with the recruits they've got coming in and uh, with Rodney Clark, you know, the transfer from Arkansas being able to play. So, anyway, thanks for watching, guys, and I should have one up uh, hopefully next week about with Butler and the Pennsylvania game. So, you guys have a good day.